This is a shigo, a leg of lamb, browning and cooking and turning on a spring in front of a wood fire on a flowered terrace in Provence. We're waiting for Gigo today on the French Chef. The French Chef is made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Welcome to the French Chef. I'm Julia Child. That was the leg of lamb we photographed in Provence at a charming restaurant near saint paul de vence I don't know whether a leg of lamb tastes better roasted in front of a wood fire than it does well cooked in your own oven, but there's something wonderfully romantic and appetizing about it. In any case, the preparation is the same no matter where you cook it. Here is a very fine leg of lamb. And when you buy one, look for the inspection stamp. This says USDA, US Department of Agriculture. That means choice. And if you get government inspected meat with the, with the seal on it, you know that you're going to get good quality. And the weight of a leg of lamb, nowadays a uh, five pound leg of lamb isn't any more tender than a seven pound leg of lamb, if it's a really fine one to begin with. Now look at this one, it has a beautifully well-rounded, full, all of this part of it is full and well-rounded. And then you look at the chop section, this is the sirloin. And as you notice that has a lovely bloom on it and it, and it humps up which means in old age, evidently, it gets flatter. And then look also at the fat, which is a lovely, firm, white, creamy fat. And that always means a great, that means a great deal. It means that the lamb has been properly fed and correctly brought up. And also another indication, if you see, if you see the butcher take cut the lamb, this point here is where the ankle bone is taken off, it's called the stifle joint. And if you look, the bones are pink, and that means that the lamb is still young. And also, if when he's breaking the stifle joint, he goes, it goes quack, and the whole thing breaks off, that means that it is a young lamb. If you can't break it, then it ain't young anymore. And be sure for this recipe that you buy a whole leg of lamb. And that means that you have the whole bone here from ankle to knee, and then there's a big leg bone in there. And then on the other side, you have the tail section and the hip. You want to have everything in it. And sometimes you will find, I think very often because of people's ovens are small, you'll have the lamb cut at the knee. And for the way that we're going to do this lamb in a special way that it's carved, you don't want no knee cut. If it is cut, you can always, you can put a skewer up through it so that you can manage somehow. But get the whole leg just like this. And there, that's the way she looks. And this is, this is called a, uh, a whole leg rather than a Frenched leg, which means they've cut the hip off. And now your butcher will probably have cut the fat off, but if not, and you never know whether they're really they're going to cut it off or not. I think it depends on the price of meat. If they can leave quite a bit of fat on, that'll mean they can charge a little more for it. And you just have a very sharp knife, and you just cut the fat off every place you see it, because the fat is a little has a rather strong taste, and lamb fat isn't very much good anyway. There's that fat on that piece of skirt and then there's always some fat right in here. And then after you've gotten it all trimmed, it'll look like this. Then it doesn't make any difference if you've, if you've trimmed some of the, if some of the meat is exposed because you're going, because that's quite all right. You see, in the inspection stamps you can see, you can uh, shave off or not depending on how you feel. There's a little bit left there, but they disappear in the cooking and it's edible inspection. And now, you can, and I always like to, 
put a little, some garlic slivers. There's a clove of garlic. And just peel the clove. And take, I like to take one big one or two or three little ones and cut them into slivers and then insert them in the lamb. And if you don't like a great deal of garlic, you can just insert them into this part here near the shank. And that is in French is called le souris, the mouse. You could just insert them in either side. And if people don't like garlic at all, you can put a little bit in the sauce. But I like to just insert a little garlic all over. And it doesn't hurt the lamb at all to make little holes in it because you because these will close up as soon as it gets into the oven. So I just put them a little bit all over. And if people come to my house and they don't like garlic, it's too bad. But I think often, usually when it's cooked, you can't taste it anyway. I mean, you, you wouldn't, it loses its wild flavor. And then on the other side, put some in. Just put them in all over as much as you, as much as you have. And then, I like to, because I like to take the fat off, I also like to oil the, oil the lamb. For one reason, one thing, oiling helps it to baste, and then if you're going to prepare it ahead of time, which you can, the oil will keep it from drying out. And I just use a very nice French olive oil. And be careful when you're rubbing on that side, because sometimes the bones are rough, you can cut your fingers. And then another thing I like to do, which salts it and also browns it a little bit, is to rub a little soy sauce onto it. That's a, a trick from our days in China. I'm not very fond of soy sauce. It does. I think it adds a great deal. And then also you don't have to worry about the lamb not browning. Now that is, frankly, all that you have to do to the lamb. It's, that's, that's certainly easy preparation indeed, isn't it? And particularly, as you know, you're not, for this recipe, you don't have to take off any of the bones. In other recipes, as you remember, we've done boning and all kinds of things, and it's been really very much of a chore. And in this one, this is all there is to it. And you can get this all done ahead of time and wrap it up in uh, foil or something and put it in the refrigerator. And then this is ready now either for a roasting outside or for in the oven. And I'm going to do it in the oven because we, I don't happen to have one of those wonderful outside barbecues. Now, ideally, this is the size pan, about 19 inches long, that will hold this leg of lamb, which is about seven to seven and a half pounds. But this pan won't fit into my oven, and I'm furious, because I have a new model of the same oven I used to have, and the new oven is shorter. So if you're going to buy an oven, measure it. And I think it certainly should be 18 inches deep, or 19 inches deep, so I'm going to have to use this pan, which will fit in, but we have stickies over here. So the only thing to do with that, this works out perfectly well. We've done it with suckling pig. When the pig's jaw stuck over the pan is to put some aluminum foil around like that. And that will pretend, that way I mean not pretend, it will prevent drippies over. There. Now that actually you could go as far as that if you wanted and then put it in a large plastic bag and just refrigerate it. And it would certainly would keep for a day or so. But I think it's very important if you want to be safe on how long to cook the lamb. I think it's a very wise thing to take the lamb out of the refrigerator for at least an hour or two hours and let it 
or let it come to room temperature because in the French method of cooking, it is cooked pink. And so that means that it cooks rather fast. I mean, it doesn't take very long to cook. And if it's cooked at room, and if it's at room temperature, you can judge the time much better. Now also, you want to prepare some vegetables for the pan for the roasting juices. A nice big onion, and here's a scrubbed carrot. And this will give some flavor to the roasting sauces. And then also some garlic. And this you don't even need to peel, just open it up. And I think this is such a measly little head of garlic, not like the kind you can get in the Italian markets, for instance, that I'm going to use a whole half one. And then just leave that in a pan, and you are ready to go. And even that you could get done ahead of time and put in a plastic bag also. And now we are ready to roast. And this is going to go into a 450 degree oven in the middle. And then you leave it at 450 degrees for 15 minutes. Then you turn the heat down to 350 degrees and in you put the vegetables. If you put the vegetables in too soon, they might brown and burn. So they just go right around the lamb after the lamb has been in 15 minutes. And I like, to, I like to baste it with olive oil. Here's a long handled baster. And baste it two or three times during its cooking just so that you can see how it's doing. And see, that, that's awfully convenient. You don't burn your hands with it. And this will take only about, only about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. And you want your meat thermometer reading to be only 125 to 130, and that's going to give you a lovely pinky rare meat. And if you haven't ever had lamb that is, that is pink like this at a temperature of 125 degrees, you'll find that it's, it's absolutely delicious. It makes another meat. Now here we have a ready roasted lamb, and I'm going to show you how it looks. There you are, with its, with its foil on. And you want to take its temperature. This is an extremely good thermometer, a professional one that's used by air conditioning people as well as by cooks. And you take it and put it right in to the thick, thickest part of the meat. And this is the kind of thermometer that you can't leave in the meat. You just put it in, take its temperature, and it says 125 degrees, take it out, or whatever it does, and then put the lamb back into the oven. In other words, you, you can't roast with it. You just put it in, and the dial goes very quickly. And then, after the meat is done, you have to let it rest for 20 minutes outside of the oven, and that's so that the meat juices will, which are bursting out as you roast it, that they will retreat back into the flesh so that when you carve the lamb, you're not, all the juices are not running out. And this is, is really very important. Be sure and let it rest 20 minutes before you're going to cook it. And then if you're going to do it ahead, you take it out of your oven, open the oven off, turn it off, and leave the lamb out of the oven for 20 minutes. Then set the oven at 120. Mine only goes to 140, so I set it just below 140. And I also keep a thermometer in the oven so I can be sure. And then after it's rested 20 minutes, I put it back in the oven and close the door and keep and look at this tomorrow to make sure that it's at the right temperature. And you can really leave a roasted lamb for an hour or two hours because it can't overcook because the oven is not over 120. And actually, I think the meat is even better when it's cooked that, when it's rested, uh, allowed to rest ahead. So remember, with this, it was a seven to seven and a half pound lamb. It was about an hour to an hour and a quarter or two, two 
a temperature of 125 degrees. Now, this is done and ready. And we have all of these nice juices here, which can be turned into a sauce. And these, just going to put these into a pan and then deglaze the roasting pan with a little white wine or a little white vermouth, whichever you have, and scrape it up. Now, this is overheat so that they will loosen nicely. And that goes into your pan. And then you allow that to simmer along with a little bit of stock. This is a lamb stock or beef stock, whichever you prefer. And that should, you, when you get your lamb done, you can allow it to, you will allow it to rest. And this, this should simmer for, oh, 20 or 30 minutes. And see, that looks very nice. And the lamb is now ready, ready to carve because it has rested. And with this, these juices, as you remember, this was an addition on with, I mean, an addition to the juices in the pan with some bouillon and some white wine or vermouth. And then you will boil them down and taste them and you're ready. You just have a little, what they call jus de roti. And now, if you've got a marvelous fireplace set up, you can roast the lamb vertically and it will revolve around the flame just as it did when we saw it in Provence. And for this, you get yourself a very stout piece of string, tie it double, and that's tied at this joint here so it can't, that can't slip off because it bulbs out a little bit and then tie a strong knot in the other end of it and then hang it on a hook and turn it around like that and it winds up and then it unwinds and it revolves in front of the fire just as it did when we saw it cooking at that outdoor restaurant in Provence. There's Alex the metro d'hotel. And there's the lamb hanging in front. And this is a marvelous system here because there's a great big iron plaque in back of the fireplace, which is about an inch thick, at least and three feet square, and that acts as a reflector. And all the heat comes out. And here, and it just goes round and round and round. There it goes. And Alex cooked his lamb only 45 minutes because they like it very rare. They like it pink in the middle. And then after he had finished cooking it, he showed me the very best way of carving lamb I've ever seen in my life. Now this lamb on a string is called Gigo à la Ficelle. There are the juices and the garlic. Oh, that looks wonderful. Just those juices having dripped off that lamb. Ah, voilà le gigot. Voilà le gigot. Vous allez nous montrer comment le découper. Oui, ben c'est très simple, vous voyez. Vous le mettez à plat comme un jambon oui. de York et vous partez de la milieu de, milieu de la moitié du gigot. Vous commencez au milieu et vous le coupez vers vous. Ah, vers, vers moi. Vous. Hein. Ah, vers vers vous. moi, oui, parce que vers vous, c'est pas mieux. Oui. Alors, oui, on voit tout de suite que ce sont de belles tranches comme il faut. Oui. Et vous pouvez... C'est comme des tranches de jambon. Oui. C'est mieux de les faire à ses mains, sauf si... Il vaut mieux, oui, c'est plus agréable quand même à manger. Il vaut oui. mieux en manger plusieurs et minces. Hein. Oui. Contrairement à la viande de bœuf. La viande de bœuf, on l'aime très épaisse, c'est meilleur, c'est normal. Vous voyez, si c'est bien tendre. 
Mais vous parlez anglais, monsieur Alex. Oui, yes, 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 a little, yes, I yes, talk in English. But you too. worked in, in London, Because, too? Oh, yes, I spent two years in London, five years winter in Obama, and, uh, you know, I think you appreciate the, the leg of a baby lamb, too. <laughs> <laughs> But what I find very interesting is that you can keep cutting right around the leg of lamb, and it doesn't, and the les tranches remain just the same. Voilà. Then we turn the, the, the leg of a mat on the other side, and we start again the other side, you know. Just continue along the same way. <gasps> and you have done nothing. You've left the tail on and the hip bone and everything, and it cuts. C'est merveilleux. Yeah, it's a piece, it's a bit, one of the best piece of the leg, you know, the baby lamb, we call Kazi. Oui. It's very, very good and very tender. That's, that's the hip or the sirloin. <laughs> you like the sirloin, good. yes. C'est beaucoup oh, plus agréable pour le manger. Voilà. Alors là, évidemment, on arrive à l'os, les tranches, on, on ne peut plus en faire. On coupe tous les petits bouts qui restent, oui. qui sont pas trop présentables, mais qui sont très, très, très goûteux. Oui. Oui. Et je oui. crois que mon Dieu, euh, voilà. il ne reste plus que l'os pour le chien. Bien. Voilà. Oh, maintenant, vous pouvez arroser de jus, si vous voulez. Oui. Vous on pouvez mettre un tout petit peu de jus, c'est toujours. Très belle présentation. Alors, voilà. voilà. Et voilà, après à manger. Voilà. Après. Vous pouvez passer Et à merci. table. Merci, bon merci Bon appétit. Merci. <rire> Since I've seen Alex carving his way, I've adopted it, and I've got exactly the same knife. There it is. That's a great knife. It's a, a Sheffield one, hollow ground with these little, I don't know what you call them, but anyway, it's just, it cuts beautifully. So they use it for cutting ham, and it keeps itself nice and sharp. Now... Here is our lamb, all ready to cut. And as you remember, as he said, the important part of this, if you're going to do it in the dining room, you'd have a napkin. I shall use my impeccably clean, ubiquitous towel, and I shall get out me, get out me platter here. The important thing is, with this, this is the top side of the lamb. There's the underside there. And you start with in the middle of the lamb, cutting towards you, just like this. And remember that you've got, if this is going to work, you have to have a very, very sharp knife. And the nice way about, a nice thing about having the lamb done this way, the outside, the outside, I say tranches, I should say slices, tranches, French for slices, are a little more well done than the inside ones. And you, as you see, if you get to the inside, it becomes pinker. And look at how lovely and juicy that is. And this, I, I had sitting in a 120 degree oven for about an hour. And it's just about as tender as anyone could, and juicy as anyone could want. But you see what, how nice those slices are. And you're always cutting right towards you. And actually, if I cut as, as many legs of lambs as Alex had, there's that little tail which you can, can get off. And then you go around to the edge. You can see there's a little bit of the bone there. So then you begin going around to the other side of the bone. But look at that, look at the, that lovely juiciness of it. No, I've got still a little over on the other side. I don't know why I never, this is such a sensible carving system. Well, that's not the most beautiful slice. Then when you, then you, st and when you finish that side, then you start again on the other side. Again, cutting towards you in exactly the same way. And a big leg of lamb like this with these wonderful thin slices will serve certainly 10 to 12 people and you'll have some leftover too. 
and you just go on and on and on and on. And then as you saw, when you come up to the more complicated hip part, which is up here, you just cut around. And I'm going to put this back and put this on the platter because I think it's more attractive and not to be outdone by Alex. I shall also put some great big tomatoes around just for color. And that's how she looks. It's really, I think that's a, it's so much sensibler and easier a system than the, than the old fashioned one of cutting down like this and then cutting across that way. I'm going to rearrange things to make sure everything is as pretty as possible. But this also, I think, makes a very nice cutting system for in the dining room, because you can cut it just as well on the platter, if it's lying on the platter like this as you can, if it's not. Now, go into the dining room and see how it looks when it's served. And, what, and one thing that, as you notice, if the, when they cut the lamb like this, that they spread the sl thin slices quite a bit out on the plate, so it makes it look like a great deal of lamb. And with this, the f I'm going to do the, a very a favorite French vegetable garniture is haricot panache, which means white beans and green beans which is very, makes a very nice combination. And, and you don't have to have any potatoes because your white beans are very healthfully starchy. And here's the little sauce that was made out of our juice. And I don't like to put the sauce on top of the meat. I'd rather put it to the side so that you can see the full glory of the meat. And for wine, a red Hermitage is an extremely nice wine to serve. That would go very well with, or you could serve a Bordeaux. Now, I think a lot of people, I think, are terrified of leg of lamb, and I think it's mainly because they don't know how to carve it. But as you've seen, it couldn't be easier to prepare, and nor easier to carve. And when it's cooked pink like this, it's wonderful eating. And all you need is the sharp knife and the gigot. So that's all for today on The French Chef. This is Julia Child. Bon appétit. The French Chef has been made possible by a grant from the Polaroid Corporation. Julia Child is co-author of Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volumes 1 and 2.